Good morning and welcome to Birmingham Unitarian Church. I am the Reverend Mandy Beal. I'm this congregation's senior minister. I'm joined in worship leadership this morning by our co-directors of music ministry, Abha and Stephen Daring, our director, our religious education coordinator, who I wish was our director of religious education, but they're not, religious education coordinator, Nico Van Ostrand, and a, a couple of young people. We are also grateful to have the technical support from our communications coordinator, Sarah Constantakis, and our Zoom greeter, Drika DeGraff. Our worship services are hosted on Zoom every Sunday morning at 1030 and then later posted on Facebook. After the service, we invite you to stay for virtual coffee hour, especially if you're worshiping with us for the first time today. This is a good way to get to know us. We have four announcements this morning, people, four announcements. First, our high school youth group, Goosh, had planned an outdoor worship service this afternoon. The service has been postponed a couple of weeks. Uh, I wish them the best of luck considering it's snowing today. Uh, more to come on that. We are pleased to announce that this year's Adopt-A-Family program has begun. At the request of Walt Whitman Elementary School, our participation in this year's program will be gift cards only. A link was sent in the Thursday shout out and we have already adopted six families. Today, immediately after worship and before coffee hour, Jane O'Neill will give a very brief presentation that is super important because it's a little complicated this year. And Jane will also do a question and answer to make sure everybody understands how they can support this great program. Our third announcement, it's also time for our annual poinsettia sale that will benefit our religious education program. This year we will have only red poinsettias and you can either get them in a small or a large you can order them online by clicking the order poinsettias button on our website. It is red, you cannot miss it. You can submit payment for those poinsettias by Venmo through the website or by check. But all orders are due by December 6th and that's a hard deadline. And last, would you like to do something on Thanksgiving day but still be socially distanced? Join us for a Zoom gathering from three to 5 p.m. on Thanksgiving day which is this coming Thursday, the 26th, bring something with you that you can share virtually with the group that represents what Thanksgiving means to you in 2020, like a poem, a picture, a story, song, food, recipe. If you'd like to attend, please RSVP to Carol Winslow by the 24th. Social justice work is one of the ways that BUC lives out our Unitarian Universalism. Each Sunday, we give a list of our social justice commitments but on this Thanksgiving Sunday, we take a moment for a land acknowledgement instead. This statement applies specifically to the geographical area of BUC. There is a unique and rich history of First Nations people in every area of this continent, and I invite you to find out what that is for your location. I invite your close attention. The campus of Birmingham Unitarian Church occupies the ancestral traditional and contemporary lands of the Anishinaabe, Anishinaabe, the Three Fires Confederacy of Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi peoples. Bloomfield Hills is situated on land that was ceded in the 1807 Treaty of Detroit. We acknowledge Michigan's 12 federally recognized native nations as well as historic indigenous communities in Michigan. We also acknowledge indigenous individuals and communities who live here now and those who were forcibly removed from their homelands. In offering this land acknowledgement, we affirm indigenous sovereignty, history, and experiences. Let's just take a brief moment to reflect on this statement and on the complicated history of our nation. We come to this Thanksgiving with a heart full of gratitude and a heart of awareness for where we have been, who we are, and where we might go together. And now, let us join together in worship. This morning's prelude is Etude Number 6 by Cuban contemporary composer Leo Brower.
It is now time for our chalice lighting, which will be led this morning by Ellis Price. I light the chalice with a reading by Alberto Rios. It is a poem called When Giving Is All We Have. One river gives its journey to the next. We give because someone gave to us. We give because nobody gave to us. We give because giving has changed us. We give because giving could have changed us. We have been better for it. We have been wounded by it. Giving has many faces. It is loud and quiet, big though small, diamond and wood nails. Its story is old, the plot worn and the pages too, but we, but we read this book anyway, over and again. Giving is, first and every time, hand to hand, mine to yours, yours to mine. You gave me yellow and you gave me blue and I gave you yellow. Together we are simple green. You gave me what you did not have and I give you what I had to give. Together we need something greater from the difference. Symbol. Let's celebrate that chalice lighting with a lot of energy this morning. Our first hymn is Sia Hamma. It'd be great to see some marching and singing and dancing at home. Here we go. We are marching in the light of God. 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 We are marching, marching, we are marching. Ooh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching. Ooh, we are marching in the light of God. We are singing. this place of worship, but into the spirit of worship, crossing the threshold of the Zoom link into the sanctuary of the internet. We are in community right now, and it isn't perfect, but it is beautiful. Wherever you are right now, notice something sacred, something beautiful, something wonderful about where you are joining us from today. You are here, and I am grateful. Grateful for being Grateful for being here. Grateful for being here together. The mission of Birmingham Unitarian Church is to create a free and welcoming religious community that encourages lives of integrity, learning, service, and joy. One of the ways that we live out that mission is providing monetary support for people experiencing a financial crisis, especially people who are a part of our beloved community. The account that we use to provide that support is funded entirely by contributions from our congregation, from you. Normally, we use the plate collection from the entire month of November for this purpose, but this year being what it is, we chose not to do that. Instead, I'm asking for your contributions today and in the week to come. 
All plate collections and non-pledge contributions made today through next Saturday will go directly to BU Sears in need. Contributions can be made through our website, through Venmo, with the username at BUCMI, or you can put a check in the mail. The need is particularly high this year, as you might imagine, and the funds for this are starting to run a little bit low. For those of you who can, I invite you to give generously in support of your fellow BUCers. And if you need a little help, please contact me or Valerie Phillips. I hope that you will. Let there be an offering of support for this beloved community and those in it. Reverend Mandy chose this next tune that we're doing today and many of you will recognize it, but it makes perfect sense for where we are right now. to the part of our service that is set aside for centering, reflection, and prayer. We begin with a sharing of joys and sorrows from our community. And just as a reminder, we do turn off the recording to share these joys and sorrows. Move deeper with me into the spirit of prayer and reflection centering. It is with hearts of gratitude that we enter this week now in a year that has been, oh, what a year. 
In this time, we are invited and called and compelled, as always, to find things for which we can be grateful. It is so easy for us to see the things that bother us and the things that weigh us down. It is our challenge to find the things that do not, to lift up ourselves and to lift up those around us. And we share in the warmth and the abundance and the harvest of this beloved community. We take that task on together. May it be so. Amen and blessed be. There is more love somewhere. There is more love somewhere. I'm gonna keep on till I. morning's story is called The Worth of Cherry Blossoms by Sarah Conover from In Kindness, A Treasury of Buddhist Wisdom for Children and Parents. In Japan, two centuries ago, there lived a Buddhist nun named Rengetsu. Her life as a nun began tragically after her husband and young children died. To support herself, she worked as a potter, a poet, and an artist. Her exquisite poetry gained her instant fame, and she soon found herself moving from one home to the next, trying to avoid the constant press of customers. Although Japan named her a patron saint of the arts, she never held on to the money she, her art brought in. She gave it to those who needed it most. More than a few times, she parted with her warm kimono to a shivering street beggar. When a robber entered her home during the night, she lit a lamp for him to see by then fixed the thief a cup of hot tea while inviting him to discuss his desperate situation. Rengetsu said she moved about like a drifting cloud blown by a fierce wind. Her poems were fresh with images from journeys through forests and mountains. On one such pilgrimage to a remote region, she had hiked since noon without having passed through a single village. But at last, as dusk descended, she came upon a small settlement along a riverbank. She knocked upon the door of an inn, humbly asking for a night's lodging. But the inn was already full. As she rested, stars appeared out of the advancing darkness. The village grew steadily more quiet. The sounds of families enjoying their suppers faded into those of preparing for the night. Rengetsu was tired, but not discouraged. Beyond the town, she had earlier spied a forgotten orchard with lush, soft grass beneath the trees. She retraced her steps down the road and bedded down for the night under a cherry tree. In the middle of the night, she sensed a bright light upon her face. It awakened her. When her eyes opened, a hazy, snowy moon loomed in the cloudless sky. Directly above her, thousands of cherry blossoms had opened while she slept, and each flower now held bright moonlight in its petal cup. It was so lovely that Rengetsu gasped. She bowed towards the village, giving thanks for this unexpected gift, a gift of nature far more meaningful than a comfortable night in bed. Rengetsu then composed this poem. Through their kindness in refusing me lodging, I found myself beneath the beautiful blossoms on the night of the misty moon. Turned away at the inn, I take this unkindness as grace, 
resting instead beneath the heavy moon and evening blossoms. Thank you, Nico. So today's story is about a woman who did not get what she wanted. She wanted to find a warm, comfortable place to sleep. And instead she slept outside in the cold night air. And what seemed like bad luck actually gave her the opportunity to experience something really special. She did not get what she wanted, but she got what she needed. And if she had gotten what she wanted, she would have missed out on the magical moment of watching the cherry blossoms open. She's probably the only person in the whole world who got to see that. After all, who else was sleeping out in that orchard? Now, this has been a year, a whole year of us not getting what we wanted. And as hard as this year has been, I think it's helped us to understand more about the difference between what we want and what we need. We wanted to eat out at restaurants, but we ate at home. We wanted to hang out with our friends and family, but instead we used Zoom or the phone. Maybe we talked through a door. We wanted to have church in our building, but we got Zoom church instead. It's fine. We did not get what we wanted, but honestly, most of us got what we needed. Having to stay in our separate homes for Thanksgiving is definitely not what we wanted. It might make us sad and it's okay to feel sad, but I think that there are ways that we can be honest about feeling sad without getting stuck in that sadness. I recently caught an episode of The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, and I heard an interview with Matthew McConaughey, who's re recently written a book. And the book is called Green Lights, and it's about the red light yellow light and green light times of Matthew McConaughey's life. I think the metaphor is pretty self-explanatory and if you'd like to listen to the interview, it's from the October 21st episode. Now I've never really wondered a lot about what Matthew McConaughey has to say about life. And I think of somebody who I would go to for advice about a party, but not really someone that I would go to for life advice. I thought of him as a person who's had a lot of green lights in his life, but I was wrong about all of that. And as I listened to his conversation with Trevor Noah, I was impressed with what Matthew McConaughey had to say about facing adversity. All of us will face difficulty in our lifetimes. It's part of what it is to be human. And Matthew McConaughey said, when faced with the inevitable, how do you get relative to the situation? For him, it's not about changing the situation, but understanding yourself in light of that situation so that you can find a way to work with it rather than try to get around it or through it without really paying attention to it. He went on to describe the way that yellow and red light times have assets that can lead to green light times. And what I found most interesting was the importance that he placed on being honest about how you feel. Sometimes, we hear that we have to push difficult feelings aside so that we can be happy. And I think we're gonna get a lot of that this holiday season. Matthew McConaughey said his approach to yellow light and red light moments was not a quote, delusionally optimistic thing of seeing the glass half full followed by a word that we don't say in church that begins with a B and also has an S in it. His point was that it's up to us to find the assets of any situation and then build on them. He believes, and I agree, that we can only do that when we're both honest about how we feel and looking for whatever good there might be in that situation. And I wonder how we can apply that thinking to our situation. How do we get relative to this Thanksgiving? We might experience feelings of anger, sadness, hopefulness, optimism, or something else. We might feel all of those things in a day or even a mixture of them all at once. But if we're in denial about what's going on, we miss out on the chance to really understand what's going on and to understand who we are because of and during this experience. Once we understand our relationship to the situation, we get relevant to it, we can evaluate the potential assets of this situation. 
those might be different for each of us. Those assets might be different for each of us. And there will be times that we might not see any assets at all. But if we're going to find those moments, those assets, we have to look for them. And just like the woman from our story, we don't have a lot of choices for our Thanksgiving celebrations this year. The doors are closed to us and we have to close our own doors. But if the woman had just sat down at the city gates and cried all night, she would have missed the special moment when those cherry blossoms bloomed. I don't want us to miss any cherry blossoms this year. We're going to have to do things differently than we're used to, but surely we can still find something that we're grateful for. And after all, that's what Thanksgiving is really about. It's not about eating certain foods, uh, which I don't think we're gonna be able to do this year anyway. If you and your immediate family put down an entire turkey over the course of the weekend, I do think you deserve a special prize, but that's not what this is about. Thanksgiving is about giving thanks. And this year, we're probably not going to get what we want, but I think that if we try, we just might find that we can get what we need. And may it be so. Amen and blessed be. Our closing hymn for this morning service is led in part by Sarah Phillips, who will be signing official American Sign Language along with There's a River Flowing in My Soul. into this world and we take with us some of the joy, the hope, and the happiness and the consideration that we found here in our time together. May we go out and find ways to be grateful anyway. May we go out and find ways to take care of each other and to find the assets in this situation, whatever they might be for us. Amen and blessed be. We now have, we'll have a short adapt a family presentation from Jane O'Neill. Uh, okay, so I am going to try and get this done in five minutes. So um, I'm going to talk kind of fast, but I'll be here for the all of coffee hour afterward. Uh, and Sarah will explain that at the end. But um, if you have any questions, always call me, text me, email me. Uh, this year, we're only doing gift cards for the families. And um, because we're giving them gift cards, we need to get them to folks a little earlier than usual. So my goal is to get them to the families by December 14th so they have time to shop with the cards that we give them. So that means our deadline for turning in money is December 6th. You can either, um, oh, so, <laughs> sorry. The in only information we have on the families is the number of children in the families. We do have a list of uh, families that you can choose from or if you prefer, you can simply donate money to the program. 
how it will all work is that you, the participant, donate the money. Um, the amount that you donate is totally up to you. We're suggesting somewhere in the neighborhood of $50 per child, but again, up to you. And then we will use the money to get um, gift cards at popular department stores like Walmart and Meyer and Target. And we will do that, excuse me, through scripts so that the BUC will get a benefit from that. Um, you will choose a family and then on a separate screen, you will donate the money. All the money that you donate will go to that particular family. Uh, so you can rest assured about that. If someone donates money to the program without picking a family, um, that money will go to either a family that's not been adopted or sometimes there are families with particular needs, uh, things like that. So the money, 100% of the money will be donated to the families. So this is the really important part. I need you to recognize that this is a two-step process. I knew Reverend Mandy would like that. Um, the first step is that you will either choose a family or just tell me you'll donate. And step two is that you'll donate the money. So when you click the orange button that we'll show you later, um, it takes you to this screen. It's in Sign Up Genius. This is the main page. And you'll notice that there's a step one and a step two. And down here, you'll scroll down and you'll get to the list of families. The first possibility is to sign up to donate money. I'm not suggesting that I want you to do that necessarily, just if that's your choice, this is the way to do it. Or choose a family and click the blue box and sign up for that. But you must submit and sign up to, to get to the next screen. Otherwise you didn't really do anything. Uh, it'll take you to this screen. If you're already in Sign Up Genius, they probably already have your email. If not, you'll have to put it in and your phone number, which is really giving it to me so I can contact you if I need to. And then click sign up now. Almost done. Now you have signed up to adopt a family. Then I need you to click back to sign up, which will take you to back to this page where you'll see step, you've completed step one and now we're moving on to step two. Now, if you make a mistake and you don't go on and click back to sign up, it's okay. They'll send you an email and there'll be this link where you can donate the money, but you won't make the mistake. You'll click back to sign up. You'll see step one, step two. Step two is donating the money. If you want to do it online, which I think is the easiest and simplest way, but if you prefer, you're not comfortable with that, you can send a check or you can click here to donate money. It'll take you to the BUC page. Uh, click on adopt a family. So we know that that's what it's for, the amount the total amount, and then submit. Of course, you can always sign, write that check and mail it. Um, there's a, a sign up for adopt a family. Since yesterday, when I made this slide, there's now a new button for poinsettias, but uh, the adopt a family button is there. Just click it and it'll take you right to that page I showed you and you take your two steps. Call me, text me, email me. I'll be in this room for the next hour if you need to talk or ask any more questions. Thank you.